a few images of the North Carolina coast. Now, here is another image of the coast, a sweet Bogue Sound watermelon. These summertime treats are known for their superior quality, and because of that, they're being shipped to grocery chains throughout North Carolina, up and down the eastern seaboard, and even north into Canada. My great-grandfather uh, started growing watermelons, and the Virginia fleet, Manhattan fleet, where well, they'd come down for the spring fish, and if most time of summer, around the 1st of July, they'd go back because the season would be ended. They'd lay over if the watermelons wasn't ripe, and, and my grandparents and uh, my dad, would they would load those uh, pogey boats, we called them, with watermelons, they'd carry them back, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York. And uh, actually, uh, uh, them captains on them boats is one named them. They said, where these watermelons come from? It's Bogue Sound. And so that's, that's how the name got started. So, what is a Bogue Sound watermelon? So people think these watermelons are a variety, and it's not. It sort of kind of take off like the Vidalia onion. It's just a geographical area that these things are grown in. But every year I get calls at the office wanting to know where they can buy seed for a Bogue Sound watermelon in any garden store because it's not a variety, you know. But anyway, the things are absolutely sweet. I can prove it. I used to think it was a perception, but we, we, we bricked them. And so I think it's because of these sandier soils, less nitrogen, and we don't irrigate, non-irrigated. We've got this loose sandy land and it don't hold a lot of water. And then one thing, if you can keep the weeds out of your crops, and then when it rains a lot, it's the uh, rain just goes right on through. And the watermelon don't need a, a lot of water, I don't think. I think it needs a little bit of water, but you need water sometime at a certain time of the year to make it grow. But I think what happened when that ground filters the sandy land, and then you're able to have good rotation about every, I try to come back every two to four years or three years in a rotation on my watermelon field. In 2006, a local co-op was formed by Guthrie to get growers together and further develop marketing of the Bogue Sound watermelon. I saw uh, farm after farm after farm going into development on 24 from Swansboro to Moorhead, which is about 20 miles. But uh, I saw that happening and I, I talked to Ray and uh, I said, we need to, to set up an association to preserve the name Bogue Sound watermelon. I said, if we brand that fruit, then the more it goes, it may, may creep and, and then run and then it, it, uh, creep, crawl and run, but it, it'll get to the place that the demand will be there. If you've got good fruit, then we do have. So that's where we at. The, the potential, I feel like the potential is unlimited. The only drawback that I see with the whole thing is the availability of land. But this thing could be a tremendous asset for agriculture in this area. Mm -hmm. I guess the farmers around here were looking because of the back allotment and the loss of allotments and selling allotments and all that stuff. They're looking for other ways to maybe enhance their farm income. And the Bogue Sound Watermelon, we thought, might serve the trick to help do that. So we had about 20 farmers to form a co-op in this thing and start shipping them. Mr. Billick called me one day and asked me, he said that we need to start a little association about Bogue Sound Watermelons. And he knew right then we were farming tobacco at the time. But then we got out of tobacco, we were looking for another income. And then we decided we'd try to group together as a bunch of association, get a bunch of guys together. And I think we end up, the year when I first joined, we end up with like 22 farmers. And we all grew, and we start shipping them basically to probably in the 18 or 20 tractor trailer loads. And last, I think, as of last year, it was up to 68 tractor trailer loads. And, but I think if we could have 100 trucks out here, it would be a demand for them but sometimes we can't make the demand. We don't have enough growers. The Bogue Sound Watermelon Growers Association, as it's called, has received two grants from the North Carolina Rural Center and the North Carolina Department of Agriculture to build a central facility where farmers can bring their produce for shipment. And we got some money to build a watermelon packing facility uh, down here in the general area where we are so that all the farmers can bring their watermelons to one location. We weigh them, bay them, put them in the bins and all that stuff and then ship them. And so that everybody can come to the same place, weigh them, screen them, grade them and all that stuff so they're all uniform when we get ready to ship. I think folks, when we have to start depending on food from other countries, we got a problem. And as long as we can grow locally and meet the demands and all that stuff, and it's kind of a win-win for everybody.
That's the way it ought to be. It's the part of America to me.